In the midst of the metropolis stands a gloomy skyscraper that holds terrifying secrets. In reality, it is the headquarters of hell, run by the devil himself. The owner of the underworld appears to be a middle-aged businessman, but his passion is not buying stocks, but global catastrophes and ocean pollution. But even such a scoundrel has a beloved daughter named Lilith, a 14-year-old demon. The girl enjoys tormenting people online and often annoys her father. Even her tutor cannot handle her devilish character and runs away to the most boring job in hell just to be away from the Red Beast. Lilith spent her entire childhood in the headquarters under her father's watchful eye, but now she wants something more. She asks her father to let her go to the human world so she can scare them in person. But the man believes that his daughter is too young and cannot handle the emotional world of humans. However, Lilith is too stubborn and not willing to give up easily. She wakes her father up in the middle of the night and suggests that he test her in the human world to show her readiness to commit evil deeds. Reluctantly, the devil agrees to compromise, but he sets a cunning condition. She must spend a week in the company of a schoolgirl named Greta Bernstein and push her to do something bad. If the girl passes the test, she can stay among humans and become an employee of evil. But if she fails, she will have an unenviable job at the bottom of hell next to her tutor. Lilith thinks it's an easy task and happily agrees to the deal. Before meeting Greta's family, the devil gives her a black magical ball that reflects the girl's feelings. Its color will change if she becomes kinder in the human world, and this will mean that she has failed the test. Lilith eagerly anticipates her new life in some penthouse, but her father's car stops in front of a farmhouse in the suburbs. The devil leaves her alone and tells her that she will live there as an exchange student. Upon seeing the guest, Greta rushes towards her with joy, but Lilith skillfully dodges her. However, Greta's mother, Sybil, manages to embrace the girl, causing the red demon to sneeze. During lunch, she meets Greta's younger sisters and her father Gabriel, who loves to sing songs about vegetables so that they grow better. Soon, Lilith realizes that the devil has given her an almost impossible task. The family of farmers is smiling and friendly, they eat healthy food and do good deeds. It seems that their souls are simply not susceptible to evil. But Lilith is not going to give up and decides to provoke them a little. Asking Greta to pass the plates, she drops them on the floor and accuses the girl of doing it. But instead of anger, Greta takes the blame upon herself. What is even more surprising, the parents do not punish their daughter, although their rare dishes were damaged. Left alone with Greta, Lilla tries to find out at least one of her dirty secrets, but the girl disappoints her again. In her free time, she helps her mother knit and sings in a choir. However, when Greta goes to the bathroom, Lilith manages to find one clue. In her closet, she discovers photos of some guy, romantically decorated with hearts. The next morning, the girls go to school on the school bus, where they meet local beauties Melody and Daria. Greta greets them, but in response, they give her a disdainful look. Then the school bullies led by Eddie get on the bus. He immediately starts teasing classmates and sticks gum to Greta's hair. Eddie switches his attention to Lilith, but he doesn't even realize that he's playing with fire. Using matches and a lighter, she puts on a fire show in his hair. The guy runs scared to the other end of the salon and hides his smoking head under a hat. On the roof of the school, a daring guy named Samuel sits, smoking and disrespecting the principal. The troublemaker immediately catches the devil's daughter's attention. In class, Lilith copies answers from the internet, which greatly worries the righteous Greta. To save her acquaintance from exposure, she eats her test at the last moment. After class, Lilith accidentally overhears a conversation between the principal and the teacher. It turns out that he is stealing money from the school budget and spending it on his personal trips. Moreover, the bully Eddie turns out to be the principal's son, and he often covers up his antics. On the street, Lilith sees Carlo, whose photos decorate the neighbor's closet. Greta is very embarrassed at the sight of the guy and looks away. It turns out that Carlo is a notorious ladies' man and easily breaks up with girls. A cunning plan immediately arises in the redhead's head. She offers Carlo money to make Greta fall in love with him and then dump her after a week. Lilith is sure that this will push the good girl to take revenge on her bully. Noticing Samuel, the little devil decides to get to know him better. At that moment, Eddie and his gang appear and accuse Samuel of stealing a watch. They are about to attack him, but he climbs onto the roof and mocks them from above. Eddie makes another mistake and orders his thugs to grab Lilith. But the girl pulls a road sign out of the ground and playfully beats them making them run away. Impressed by Lilith's behavior, Samuel offers to have lunch with her. He confesses that he steals things from hooligans for fun and dreams of earning an honest living to buy a ticket to Berlin. In their conversation, 
he learns that Lilith has never seen the sea and takes her to the top of the church tower, where there is a beautiful view of the beach. Yielding to the romantic moment, Samuel unexpectedly kisses the girl. Lilith is shocked and pushes him away, starting to hysterically sneeze. Inside the church, the devilish girl feels even worse and runs away. At home, Lilith meets Greta, who talks incessantly about Carlo. The redhead complains to her neighbor about strange feelings inside her and says that they appeared after meeting Samuel. Greta suspects that her neighbor has fallen in love with a guy, but she denies it. Looking at her magic ball, Lilith is horrified to find pink hues in it. As luck would have it, her father calls at that moment and asks about her progress. Against the background of the devil, they inform him that one of his employees has fallen in love. The man becomes furious and orders him to be immediately dismissed from work. It turns out that demons can fall in love and become professionally unfit. In horror, Lilith ends the conversation, deciding to stay away from Samuel in the future. In the evening, the devilish girl tells Greta's parents that their daughter has a date. However, contrary to her expectations, the advanced adults react well to the news and even offer to buy contraceptives for Greta. The girl is embarrassed and runs out to the yard. Lilith catches up with her and offers to work on her image. She does Greta's makeup and hairstyle and gives her a revealing red dress. The girl is worried about her provocative appearance, but Lilith convinces her that this is the only way she can charm Carlo. Samuel visits their home and asks Lilith to go up to the roof. At first, the devil resists, but eventually agrees to the meeting. Samuel apologizes to Lilith for the kiss, but she doesn't want to hear anything. Feeling that strange feelings are overcoming her again, she leaves, leaving the guy alone. Before going to bed, the girl looks at her ball, which has become even more pink. A new day has come. A family of farmers is going about their usual business, the father tending to the cabbage, and the mother having breakfast with the younger children. Greta is planning to sneak out in a new outfit, but Sibylla notices her revealing attire and gets upset. She immediately knows it's Lilith's doing. Threatening to kick them out of the house, she orders both girls to put on modest knitted dresses. To protect Greta from the teasing of her snobby classmates, Lilith passes off the knitted dresses as a trendy fashion trend. By slightly editing photos from fashion magazines, she manages to convince Melody and Daria that Greta's mother is a famous fashion designer. The girls start talking to Greta as equals and ask her to get them exclusive dresses from Sibylla Bernstein. Samuel and Lilith head to the beach on their bicycles, where the devilish Lilith sees the sea for the first time. Unable to contain her excitement, she dips her toes in the water and joyfully jumps around. Samuel decides to play tag with her, and they happily run around on the sand. Meanwhile, Greta arrives at the school music group rehearsal, where Carlo is the DJ. The shy girl puts forward a few ideas on how to improve Melody and Daria's number. Carlo suggests that she performs with the girls, and she perfectly compliments their vocals. Suddenly, the girls' performance is interrupted by their homeroom teacher. He announces that the principal has banned them from performing at the festival, having found a vulgar connotation in their group name Pussy Deluxe. Instead, a quartet in which the director's son plays will entertain the guests. Lilith and Samuel blissfully lounge on the sand, enjoying each other's company. The atmosphere is ruined by a message from the devil, who is interested in his daughter's misdeeds. Lilith confesses to Samuel that her father might lock her up again. The boy promises to rescue the princess from the castle, which finally melts the devilish girl's cold heart. This time, couple kisses by mutual agreement. Later, Lilith re-reads her father's angry messages and realizes that she is becoming weak because of her love for Samuel. She decides to run away from the boy and accidentally runs into Gabriel, who takes her home. Carlo is impressed with Greta's voice and offers her a permanent spot in the group. He decides to kiss the girl goodbye, but they are interrupted by Gabriel, who drives by in his truck. During the radish harvest, an intimate conversation develops between neighbors. Lilith talks about her strict father and admits that she will only be able to stay in town if she commits some wrongdoing. Despite this, Greta supports her friend. Lilith realizes that she no longer wants to harm this sweet girl. The next day, she drags Carlo away from her friend and announces that she is breaking their deal. But the guy says he really likes Greta and returns Lilith's money. Then he tells Greta the whole truth. Disappointed by her cruel act, Greta sends Lilith packing. But even this event doesn't anger the good-hearted girl, it just makes her sad. Samuel invites Lilith to the beach, where he demonstratively throws a bottle with a ticket to Berlin to the sea. The lovesick guy says he plans to stay in the provincial town with her. The girl is not happy with such a confession and declares that meeting Samuel is the worst thing that ever happened to her. In her distressed feelings, the girl runs away. 
In tears, she comes to Greta for help and tells her that she left Samuel because he had a positive influence on her. The young devil shows the ball of mischief, which has turned completely pink because of her infatuation. This means that she failed the test and tomorrow her father will take her back to headquarters. Softening, Greta promises to help her friend, after which they embrace. The day of the festival arrives, and the devilish father himself comes, expecting his daughter's wicked deeds. At this time, Greta and a group prepare a sabotage by sprinkling itching powder into the costumes of the competitors. The director's speech about his trip to Africa is accompanied by shameful edited photos. When the audience is already laughing at it, the man stops the report and announces a musical number. The performance fails with disgrace, as the musicians start playing haphazardly due to the terrible itching. The devil rejoices and applauds, seeing the suffering of mortals. He decides that it is Lilith's mischief, but she shakes her head in bewilderment. When the musicians leave the stage in misery, they are replaced by Pussy Deluxe. The daring trio in knitted dresses cause a sensation with their colorful show. The director is furious with what is happening and orders the homeroom teacher to stop the sabotage, otherwise he will be fired. To which the teacher responds that he has requested an investigation into his corrupt dealings. A fight breaks out between the men, which literally ends in the director's downfall. The devil leads his daughter out of the hall and hesitantly follows him, waiting for the revelation. However, her father congratulates her on her success, as she was able to push Greta into a wicked act. He hands her a certificate of employment in hell, but to be sure, he asks her to show the magic ball. Lilith is once again expecting the worst, but the evil detector remains completely black in her hands. Her father is pleased with such a result and allows her to stay in the provincial town. A happy Greta runs up to Lilith and tells her that she came up with all the tricks on her own. She also painted the magic ball with black nail polish so that it wouldn't reveal Lilith's true feelings. Greta didn't like being a bad girl, but she did it to save her friend. The girls embrace, after which the little devil runs off in search of Samuel. In the end, the main heroines are rewarded with a happy ending. Greta receives approval from her parents and a long-awaited kiss from Carlo. Lilith catches up with Samuel at the station and confesses her feelings to him. The guy responds in kind, and the little devil burns his ticket to Berlin with her finger.